Welcome to The Old Man and the Three with J.J. Reddick and Tommy Alter, brought to you by 342 Productions. This is episode 141, Desmond Bain. Tommy, lots going on in the NBA. A lot. We should mention that we are at the halfway point right now. And I think it's a good time to go back and just briefly, very briefly, go through some of our preseason predictions. Let's do it. Just the ones that stand out. Again, you don't know about injuries. You don't know about availability. Clippers were, I think, hard for both of us to some degree. You got it. I think you're, you're, I remember you saying this, you said something along the lines of, I don't think Kawhi is going to play enough games for them to be as high as one or two in the standings. Uh, You had them fifth. They're currently sixth. I had them as high as two in the Western Conference. So that's that's one in the West that jumps out for me. Um, We've mentioned this many times, but we'll mention it again. You had Boston sixth in the East. I think it will go down probably as one of the worst picks, (laughs) if not the worst pick to ever be made on on this podcast. And there's just no defense for it. I don't. I mean, my my logic then I thought made sense at the time, but did not. I don't remember your logic. My logic was I thought there was going to be a learning curve with Joe. Okay. So they were going to start slow, and I thought the defense was going to take a little bit of a drop with Rob I, with being Rob out. Being out early, I thought he was yeah. going to be out until around the All Star game. Obviously, that did not happen, and offensively they exploded. And so I'd say from week, honestly, from opening night, it looks stupid. And I even said, I think the second show that I wish I could have had that pick back. Uh, and it's kind of looked stupider since then. So I'll you know, give you another when, one. When, of they, your... <laughs> when they win the championship, it's going to look even stupider. <laughs> I'll give you another one of your stupid picks. Let's hear this. You had the Pistons in the play in They're Yep. Ninth. I did. Yep. I did. You had yep. them in the play in. Yep. Yeah. They've got the second worst record in the NBA I don't think, right now. I don't, see, Some of that, I... So, I don't think so. I don't, I, we, were, we talked about it. We were both high on them. Well, we were high on them. We were both high on them, and it's also... it's a, That's a total crapshoot. I mean, Cade, play, yeah, Cade yeah. not playing. Like, there's so many... They have the, they have a lot of good young players on that team. I feel like picking a, picking the 9 and 10 seeds in the conferences are a little bit of, like... A crapshoot, yeah. Who the fuck is... I mean, we're about to talk about the Pacers in a second. Neither of us thought the Pacers were going anywhere. This is now a six seed in the East that is competitive with everybody, you know, and is beating is, is beating the Celtics. The only time they've played them this year. Um, I mean the one, I think the only pick of yours that I feel like is a little questionable looking back is you had, uh, you had Denver. Yeah. Six. That's the one I starred. Yeah. That's the one I, I and highlighted that, is and a, that may a bad be, pick. And that may be the best team in the West. Yeah. They were six last year and they get Michael Porter jr. Back. They bring in Bruce Brown, Christian Brown, by the way, has been great for them. Um, Jamal Murray comes back. It, I, Jokic is awesome. I I, I fucked that pick up. The only I that the one up. the other team we both overrated. I overrated more than you was Minnesota. I mean that's the yeah. big that's the big disappointment. I think probably across the league, not just in the Western Conference, but yeah. And the, you look, the Suns have had injuries. We both were relatively high on them. You had them third. I had them fourth. Um, I had the Pels fifth. You had this Pels sixth. Like we, we, for the most part, we had a lot of these teams. We had the Lakers, both of us, I think in ninth playing ish blazers playing ish. Um, so we didn't have any egregious ones. The, the one, uh, thing we should mention, you brought up Indy. So Indy, uh, is currently in sixth place. There are five games of, as of today, as of this recording, um, currently, uh, five games above 500 got a real shot to get in the playoffs when the odds opened on DraftKings Sportsbook uh, before the season to participate in the play-in tournament Indy was at plus 1400 right now they're at minus 160 they're actually minus 160 to make the playoffs as well I, 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 I didn't expect them to be good I didn't and I actually referenced them actually them actually now tanking and going for the bottom and trying to get a high draft pick which historically they haven't been able to do because they've sort of lived in that middle and Tyrese has been amazing Buddy yeah. Heald's had a great season Matherin has been one of the standout rookies Miles Turner probably is having his career year um I just Nemhard yeah they have a lot a of good yeah. young, they have a lot of good young players one thing about the Pacers in particular I wanted to ask you about that I thought was uh, there was a good SI article about this a couple of days ago. I thought 
I think kind of, you know, stands out for why they've succeeded this year. They were horrible in the clutch last year. Mm -hmm. They were uh, 11 and 34 with games um, decided by uh, less than five points. Right now they're 16 and 10. Uh, they're seven and one in their last eight games that are like this. And obviously, you know, the eight is sort of a small sample size, but is that just Tyrese taking the jump? Because it does feel like that is a difference of why this is a team that's a, you know, a, a team that could compete for a top, potentially top five seed in the East versus a team playing in the lottery is just these end of game moments. I've, I pr I'll be honest with you. I haven't watched all 26 clutch games of theirs, but I've watched a number of them. What stood out to me is execution and control. And so I, even though they have young guys, I do think they execute really well in the, in the clutch. Rick has always been great with diagramming plays. Um, but the other part is, is Tyrese's control and his patience and poise. We saw that in the fourth quarter of that Clippers game, uh, that pass he made to Nemhard to beat the Lakers, uh, where he could have probably taken a very four shot and instead throws a left-hand cross-court pass on time on target, right in his shooting pocket. So I think I think a lot of it is Tyrese's poise and control. Um, I I'm, I am blown away though. I just I, I rechecked the odds on this too. To start the season, they were plus twenty five hundred to make the playoffs. Um, I I, th I think they're a playoff team. I don't know. I don't know if they s fall back into that seven through nine spot. But I do think they're a playoff team. They, they've also played well against the top of both conferences. They have only played Boston once, but they beat them. They're they're two and two against Brooklyn, um, but they were there were some injuries for one of the games they lost. Um, and they 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 played Philly tough. They obviously played Miami well. Uh, I was going to ask about Buddy. Buddy's having um, his best three point shooting season since I think twenty sixteen or seventeen in sack, but definitely his last over the last couple of years is shooting forty two point six from three and nine attempts. Do you feel like that's a guy um, that people have almost like slept on a little bit? Um, no, uh, no. Uh, you know, Buddy has been a great shooter. If you look at sort of. Uh, young players or players early in their careers, three point totals uh, through three years, through four years, through five years. He's always been like in NBA history towards the top of that list. He's always yeah. been a great shooter. He's getting better shots this year. I don't remember the exact statistic, but I saw something on Twitter about the number of wide open shots that he's gotten, three pointers specifically, wide open threes that he's gotten. It's the most. Uh, that he's gotten since his rookie year when he played uh, in New Orleans. So I, I, I think some of that is Rick. Some of that is Tyrese. Some of that is Miles Turner. Miles Turner, to me, in watching, does such a good job and has such a good feel of when to pop, when to short roll, when to fully roll. Um, their game the other night, Tyrese hit him twice for these pocket passes where he dunked on someone. And then other times you see him popping and Tyrese throws it back and he knocks down a three. So he kind of opens things up as much yeah. as it's Tyrese and as much as Buddy. I think having Miles Turner there and playing the way he's playing, he opens things up for them. Their offense has been top 10 for most of the season. Um, we should say before we move on, Tyrese still top five in Raptors. Oh, man. Still, still top five. Shout out to our friends at Stat Muse, who I will admit I've made fun of some of their tweets. But this is a good tweet that they've had. Like this is the this is why I follow Stat Muse. They posted the other day, uh, Tyrese Halliburton this season, uh, first in assist, fourth in steals, ninth in threes, the only player in the top ten for all three categories this season. He's having an All Star season. Uh, Grizz, Grizz, by the way, again going back to our our predictions, I had them at third in the West. You had them at seventh which I felt like was really low at the time. They're currently tied for first. Yeah, it, was. it was low. Thank you. And right now they have the, uh, they're tied for six with the best NBA championship odds. I have mentioned this before. I'll mention it again. I've put some money on the Memphis Grizzlies. <laughs> well, uh, one of the reasons, one of the things. Was, I got much better odds than plus 1,000. One, one of the reasons. I took it a while ago. One of the reasons it's, it's definitely low, which I'm sort of curious about, and I don't have the specific numbers in front of me because it's changed over the last couple of weeks, but these guys are, and we've talked about it a little bit. These guys are so good at winning without jaw mm -hmm. and winning without Bane and how good those two are. I mean, those are two, they're the best guards in the league. 
and Bain especially has missed a ton of time this year, and they doesn't they don't miss a beat. I'm glad but, you brought this up. You know they're so. I'm deep. glad you. I've got this right here, right in front of me. Tyus Jones in seven games as a starter this season, 21 points a game, 64 percent true shooting percentage, 50 percent from three, 7.7 7 assist. This is the most remarkable stat: a 4.9 assist to turnover ratio over two steals a game and a plus 6.6 .6 per 100 possessions. It feels a little bit like Jalen Brunson, right? Where Tyus uh, could be a full-time starter as a point guard and run a team on almost any team. And yeah. he just happens to be John Morant's backup. Yeah. And then we, we've talked about this last week, but Jaron Jackson defensively just i mean it feels like that's if he stays healthy that's the runaway defensive player of the year the runaway maybe not runaway i don't like using the word run i don't like you I shouldn't like, have nothing's we'll, a, take, nothing's we'll, a, nothing's we'll take a, we'll take the word back nothing's we'll take the word a de back. nothing's a definite i would say he's the favorite he's the in defensive player of the year he's one of i think two favorites meaning there's a there's a special class of favorites okay H him and brooke i got him and brooke okay all right that's, as my two we'll, we'll favorites. We'll, let's check back in. We'll check oh, back. Yeah. We'll check back in in June and see where that's at. Uh, Grizz, Grizz, by the way, currently have the third best odds. They're trailing the Warriors and Nuggets to win the Western Conference. They're at plus four seventy five. They open at plus eight hundred. You mentioned you bring up. Is this player getting slept on? Is it to me these odds to start the year for them felt a little low, given. Their season last year, how well they played at times without John ja Morant, and how tough of a series that was against the Warriors in the second round. I, I, they yes, they lost the series, but there were can I raise a, a few games that could have swung either way. Can I raise a theory for why that may have been? Is do you think that some of this is people thought last year was a fluke because these are a lot of these were a lot of guys who I think are probably household names now but were not household names last year. They I mean they they would talk about it all the time. They were not on national TV a lot. They were not in a before the playoffs they were not necessarily besides Ja who's sort of an undeniable people superstar. who make odds don't care about whether people watch TV. People that make odds so then, make it based so on why, how good a team so is. So then why were they slept on? I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to talk to our friends at DraftKings. Yeah, I think we should. When I throw down on the NBA action, it's got to be with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Take a shot at an even bigger payout with DraftKings Friday Night Favorites. All you have to do is download the DraftKings Sportsbook app using code JJ, opt in, and place a two-leg pregame money line parlay, and you'll get a 50% profit boost. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code JJ. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Just a little reminder, uh, we have a newsletter, a farewell to takes. Very easy to subscribe to it. It's free. Go on any of our social channels or you can go on 342.com and you can find a little button that says subscribe. And that newsletter comes out every Monday. You know what else comes out every Monday? Our exclusive Amazon Music episode, The Old Man and the Three Things. Tommy and I riff on three things around the NBA. Every week, it's very topical. It's a deep dive. It's one of our favorite things that we get to do uh, at 342. So please go give that a subscribe as well. Let's get to our conversation with Desmond Bain. All right, let's welcome in Desmond Bain. Desmond, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate the time. My man, good to be back. It is good to be back. We had you on around this time last year. Um, I was singing your praises early in the season. Uh, Tommy knows this. I, 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 I think I texted you actually uh, when I was going on countdown. I was talking about your early start and then you had your toe injury. And I think it's really interesting because Brandon Ingram also has a toe injury. And I'm yeah. trying to figure out what it feels like to have a big toe sprained. What, what is the limitations? What is the, the hesitancy? <laughs> Bro, that, that shit is no joke. Like, um, that shit is no joke. Like, it was it was weird because when I first hurt my foot, it was in, like, the third quarter of the Timberwolves game. And uh, I finished the game. I ended up playing well. Um, and I go to the locker room, and I, one of our trainers, I was like, yo, can I get an ice bucket? You know, my foot's a little sore or whatever. And one of our PTs come in. He's like, yeah, let me take a look at it. And, uh he was like, yeah, I think you got turf toe. And I was like, I mean, I really don't know what that is. Like, 
he was like, well, it's intricate. Let's go get an x-ray first. And then the doctor was like, no, I think you broke your foot. And I ended up seeing like three different doctors. It was a crazy process, but um, I mean, you use your big toe for everything. I mean, to push off, to jump. And I had like bone um, injury as well. Like my sesamoid is, is still in two pieces like to this day right now. So that's something that I'll probably have to get taken care of in the off season, um, you know, but it's just, like you never know how much you need to use your big toe until you can't use it. <laughs> it's just crazy. I, uh, I I was looking these stats up today because I think it's really interesting. We're recording this on Thursday. You guys are currently tied for first in the Western Conference. You're tied for the second best record with Denver overall in the league. And Ja has missed seven games. You have missed 20 games. And Jaron has missed 16 games. Those are your three leading scorers. And obviously, Steven has been in the lineup. Tyus has been in the lineup. Uh, Dylan has been in the lineup. But arguably, your three best players have missed a significant amount of time. And you guys are sitting here in a great position. And I really do not know a lot about Taylor Jenkins. And I'm trying <laughs> to figure out what is he like? Does he yell? Has he ever smiled? Has he ever smiled? He loves a smile. He's actually very corny. Like he's like a very corny dude, you know, little side jokes here and there, but man, like he got a great heart. Like I, that's, that's like the first thing that really stood out to me. Um, you know, when I got down to Memphis with just his care factor, um, you know, for us as players, for the team, um, you know, and it's easy to play for a coach that's like that and still his confidence and all of us let it fly. I mean, no disrespect to any of the players that we have on previous teams, but, you know, some of our guys are shooting in the 20 percent, you know, th low 30s, um, you know, just not really shooters. And, you know, he still let it fly. If you're open, we all got confidence in you let it fly. So it's like just go out there and hoop, you know, have fun. We're going to get stops. We're going to play with our swag. We're going to talk our talk and, you know, walk the walk. We were talking about um, we were talking about Tyus Jones the other day and and and. And JJ was just saying, like, this is a guy that could easily be a starting point guard in the NBA, depending on the situation. No doubt. Do you think, do you just think, and this just goes, you know, nine, 10 deep with how you guys play? Do you feel like this mentality of like, not that obviously like you guys getting hurt is not a good thing, but there's a blessing in the fact that, you know, you're, you're out, Jaws missed some time, Jaws missed some time. There's a blessing that they're thrown into the fire. And it's not like, oh, we just need to rely on these two dudes to carry us all year. No doubt. I mean, especially like it's, it's big during the regular season. Obviously, depth is important, but, you know, come playoff times, you know, that rotation's cut down to eight or nine guys. And, you know, you got to rely on those guys in high pressure situations. And, um, you know, Tyus obviously is, you know, a starting caliber point guard and backs up arguably the best point guard in the league now. So he doesn't really get, you know, the minutes or the shine that, you know, he probably deserves. But, um, you know, I mean, we got Zaire Williams, John Conchar, Santi Aldama has been huge for us this year. It's like all these guys just end up stepping up. You know, we lost Melt, lost K.A., didn't know how everything was going to look. Those are two experienced guys that played a big part in our rotation. And it's like guys just step in and there's no no drop off. We asked you about the culture last year of the Grizzlies and – I have so many questions about your teammates and you just brought up John Conchar and he's got a, he's got a similar sleeve and I want to, I want to make one point real quick. The last possession of my NBA career when my Achilles was fucked up, John Conchar came down in on the fast break. I was backing up and he tried a Euro step. He missed a shot. I got called for a foul or whatever. But when I stepped on my right Achilles, like my right foot, my Achilles just like, you know, whatever. It was done. I walked off the court yeah. and I was like, that's my last NBA game. I knew it at the time. But it seems to me like he's got some sauce to him. For sure. But, he, but he's like an IUPUI guy. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's probably the best way to put it. I mean, he has a little shit to him, but he's an he's a IUPUI guy. IPMW, whatever you want to call it. But um, he just does his job. I mean, it's weird. Like, John's like the guy that's always in the right spot. Like, He's going to come up to you and whisper in your ear in the layup lines, like just some corny <laughs> shit. Like he's just, he's a cool ass dude, man. One of a kind. 
Um, yeah, he's he's a, he's an interesting cat. We were talking about with you with you last time about you guys talking and how it bothers some other teams, and obviously a lot yeah. has happened, and, and we'll get to some of the stuff that's happened sort of since the last time you were on. But I'm curious with some of the new guys and some of the younger guys, like are are they coming in talking shit? Or are they like kind of quiet and they're basically watching you guys and they're like, all right, for me to like fit in, I got to Like, I got to up it a little bit. I think that's a good question. I mean, because I feel like it's in some of those guys, like, but you know, once you see the leaders of the team, you know, not backing down from anybody talking their talk, I think that it just kind of flows, you know, Santi Aldama, I heard him talking shit to somebody and I was like, where in the hell is this coming from? You know what I'm saying? But that's just that's just our team, man. That's that's the way we rock. You guys realize you there's a there's a lot of NBA fans who feel like you guys are annoying. Do you do you realize that? I'm 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 person. I, look, I'm not saying you are annoying. I'm saying there's people that feel like you're. Annoying. I I can see it. I mean, you know, we got Dylan Brooks who doesn't shut up. John Morant all up in the media. You know, Steve O doing his Steve O things. I I can see it for sure. <laughs> Um, speaking to Dylan, uh, Tommy and I have become obsessed with, um, this, do do you follow advanced stats at all? Do you, do you pay attention to that? I I see some of it. Yeah. I see some of it. So there's a 538 Nate Silver's website has a, uh, all encompassing stat called Raptor (laughs) and Dylan Brooks on Twitter, at least is a very polarizing player. Now, I happen to be a fan of Dylan Brooks, despite the fact that him and Coach K got into it when Oregon beat Duke. I have no no issue with that. Um, But I was looking this up today. So he's 14th in the league in defensive Raptor. Raptor's the 538 stat. And he's tied uh, with Jose Alvarado for 36 overall. best 36th best, best player in the league for wins above replacement player. What do you think... I, I want to get your 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 sort of opinion on why he's so polarizing, but what do you think his real value is? I mean, it's that's that's a great question. I don't think you can measure it. I mean, because of all the things he does, um, not only on the basketball court. I mean, he's the first guy in the facility. Um, you know, every day he's in the facility seven days a week. You know, off day, lockout day, regardless, whatever it is, he's in there getting body work or whatever the case is, uh, and then. 82 games, you can count on him guarding other teams' best player, whether it's a point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward. It really doesn't matter. Um, you know, and the edge and the intensity that he brings night in and night out just kind of wills our team, you know, especially if it's, you know, Orlando on a Tuesday night, second game of back-to-back. We just play San Antonio twice um, after playing three games in four days. You know, like guys like that are um, you know, in those stretches of the season, for sure. I took, I took Tommy. I, we were both at the Knicks game last night to watch Tyrese play, and TJ McConnell had a big game. And I, yeah. and I obviously am a big TJ fan. He's like a brother to me. But I had two people in the stands during the game that you know they knew who I was. They were asking me questions about the NBA, and when TJ started killing, they're like, "Every team needs a TJ McConnell." For sure. And I feel like every team needs a Dylan Brooks. And I Same brought up thing can be said. Yes. And I brought up Taylor. And I'm curious the dynamic because a lot of the polarization about Dylan is not defensively, it's offensively in the shot selection. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I feel like one of the strengths of a coach is to give players freedom. For sure. So where does sort of that dynamic play out in real time? There's definitely a, a healthy balance. You know, I mean, I think when Dylan first got in the league, he was on, you know, Grizzlies teams that weren't necessarily as competitive, you know, so he might have developed some some habits, you know, where he's the, the go-to guy. I mean, the go-to offensive option. And then you drop John Moran, Jaron Jackson, and um, bring some other guys into a fold. So it's like, you know, you you got to kind of defer to those guys. The ball's going to be in their hands, and now you kind of got to be an off-ball scorer, you know, and, you know, pick your spots. Um, you know, so there's there's obviously been been battles, but I think DB's been great, uh, you know, this year, especially just 
buying into being more of a playmaker, um, you know, kind of taking what the defense gives him, um, not forcing a lot of those non-restricted area two-point field goals that he's done in the past. Um, you know, he's trying. I mean, he's he's a winner, you know, so it's not like he was taking those mid-range shots and those follow-away shots thinking that, oh, I got to get mine. Like, he just felt like that was the best option, I'm sure, on the floor. And that's that's one of the things that makes him so good, though, is his confidence. You know, nobody's shaking his confidence. So anytime DB shoot, I think that there's a chance that it's going in no matter – it's going to look one or two ways. It's either going to look crazy and miss, or it's going to look crazy and it's going to go in. Wait, but, wait hold on know. a second. I, I, I have to interject here because I, when I watch him shoot, I feel like there's such variation in form. For sure. Do you see, do you see that? Yeah. I, Even I saw him especially, yeah. so his, 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 shooting, his shooting pocket is low, first of yeah. all. Yeah. But his follow-through... To me, there's such a variation. <laughs> I, I play sure. with a guy, you probably know who he is, but I play with a guy, guy Hito Turkoglu, yeah. who I used to tell him all the time when he was, especially on free throws. I'm like, dude, you can never be a good free throw shooter if you're <laughs> shooting a different way every time. Yeah, it's crazy. Now, sometimes it's like DB shooting the ball with one hand. Like it's like one arm's all the way up in the air and the other was left arm's like right here. But I mean, that shit goes in sometimes. So it's like, just do what you do. You know, we, we shoot now every shoot around after practices and stuff, making five out of six, really focusing on balance and stuff like that. And I think that it's helped translate a little bit, but you know, it's just like anything, just trying to develop those healthy habits. What do you think makes Jaron so special defensively? I mean, his, he doesn't care, you know, every good shot blocker, um, you know, it's fearless at the rim. You know, he's been dumped on. He got dumped on last night by Sohan. I don't know how many blocks he had, but I'm sure it was over two or three. I mean, every game, it seems like he's changing things for us on that end. I mean, he's – I had to look up yesterday. I was like, man, I got to know what this dude's wingspan is. And online, you know, it says seven foot wingspan. And, um, you know, we talk about that care factor that Dylan Brooks has and it's something that kind of feeds – in the gerund, you know, it feeds in the job, feeds in the me, it feeds in the Steve Will, you know, really just to come out and play with that fire every night. And Jaren's anchor in the our defense. I mean, since he's came back, we became one of the best defenses in the league. Um, we should also mention that Paulo Bancaro also dunked on Jared Jackson. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I, yeah, I, I mean, I, mean, I don't know. We, we don't have to talk about that one. We don't have to talk about that one. <laughs> <laughs> Take your shot at turning buckets into big cash with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. They're my go-to for hoops action. Everybody knows I love building out some same-game parlays, but I also love how fast and easy and reliable the payouts are when you win those parlays. Right now, new customers can bet just $5 and get $200 in free bets instantly, win or lose. Looking for an even bigger payout? Take a shot at our Friday night favorites. All you have to do is go to the DraftKings Sportsbook app, opt in, and place a select two-leg pregame money line parlay, and you'll get a 50% profit boost. The two games I'm watching right now, Tommy, the Hawks-Pacers game on Friday night and the Nuggets-Clippers game on Friday night. I think those two games are going to be fascinating. Download the app now and sign up with code JJ. New customers, bet $5 on the NBA and get $200 in free bets instantly. That's code JJ, only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Say goodbye to last year's outdated, disorganized methods of managing your money and say hello to Rocket Money, the better way to hack your finances in 2023. Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill, is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Over 80% of people have subscriptions they forgot about, like me, like that streaming service you bought to watch just that one show on or that free trial that you never even used. Rocket Money will quickly and easily identify your subscriptions for you so you can stop paying for the ones you don't want. Rocket Money makes canceling subscriptions as easy as a click of a button. Simply find the subscription you don't want and press cancel and Rocket Money will cancel it for you. No more long hold times with customer service or tedious emailing back and forth. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money, saving the average person up to $720 a year. 
Tommy, I use Rocket Money. I told you about it. I recommended it to you. And it was amazing how many unwanted subscriptions I had, including a subscription to the Roanoke Times. Now, nothing against the Roanoke Times, but I do not read my hometown newspaper, but apparently I had a subscription to it. Stop throwing your money away. Cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash JJ. That's rocketmoney.com slash JJ. Rocketmoney.com slash JJ. Desmond, uh, I, I'm trying to figure this out as an observer, and Tommy chides me all the time because I'm 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 an unabashed. Memphis Grizzlies fan. I he's am. a super. He's a super fan. <laughs> <laughs> borderline, borderline restraining order. It's the. Re- I mean, it's the reason I'm watching Memphis Orlando on League Pass. You know, it's like <laughs> if Memphis is on, I'm watching them. Yeah. But I'm I'm an outside observer, and I see you guys uh, dancing in the tunnel uh, yeah. before the game. I see Ja making the comments that no one in the West bothers him. Uh, I see uh, Dylan Brooks's uh, body language uh, during a, during the Golden State game. I yeah. actually said the Golden State punked y'all, but watching Dylan Brooks, I'm like, it oh, he's a, he's a tough dude. Yeah. And I'm trying to figure out who who is the heartbeat, who is the soul. I think every team has a soul, has a heartbeat. Who's the heartbeat of your team? That's, that's, I mean, I think I got a point with Dylan Brooks again. I mean, it's, it's Dylan Brooks. It's, it's dry. It's everybody kind of does it in their own way. You know what you're getting out of Steve-O. He might not be as vocal, but you know, he's going to be that physical presence. Jaron doesn't speak a lot, but his presence is felt, you know, I'm probably the one that honestly speaks the most, um, you know, in timeouts and huddles and, and stuff like that. But, Tyus Jones does a great job leading off the bench. I mean, and that's, that, I think those are, that's a sign of great teams, you know, when you have four or five, six guys that you can count on to, you know, kind of lead. I think that if I had to point to one guy as a heartbeat, I think I got to say Dylan Brooks, but, um, you know, I think it is a collective unit. We, we all try to lead. Tommy, did you, did you hear what he just said? He said the sign of great teams. <laughs> <laughs> The I mean, sign he's not of wrong. great teams. He's not, I was going to say, do you guys feel a little bit, uh, obviously you haven't accomplished everything you want to accomplish, but do you feel a little bit, even from like this time last year, like you've gone from being like the hunters to the hunted because you were sneaking up on people a little bit last year and now everybody knows? It's crazy you say that because Coach Jenkins loves, he loves that. Like, and Job obviously talks about it. We went through a little stretch when I was out when we were losing some games. Um, you know, and that was like his message, you know, I mean, we're, we're being hunted, you know, every, every time we walk into somebody's arena, their fans are, you know, going to pack the place. Everybody wants to see the Memphis Grizzlies. People got to circle it on their calendar. Um, you know, not only because we're a good team, but we also talk our shit, you know, so it's like guys ain't going to forget that next time we come around. So, um, you know, I think that we've done a good job of, understanding that and you know taking the right mentality and approach to to each, each night speaking of talking your shit i feel like there's a budding rivalry a budding rivalry because a rivalry only happens when you meet multiple times in the playoffs but there's a budding sure. rivalry with you and the warriors yeah and you guys have talked some shit and they have talked some shit how do yeah. you sort of view the um the relationship there between those two teams. I mean, I think that obviously Golden State gets, you know, all the credit for everything that they've accomplished, you know, up to this point. But, um, you know, I mean, I think that that's a team that that we look at and, you know, feel like we can accomplish similar things. I mean, obviously we haven't won a championship, so we don't know exactly what it takes to get there and, you know, win a championship. But, um, you know, I mean, we're young, we're, we're up and coming. We got a core group of guys that love playing together and being together. Um, you know, so I think that they're kind of, you know, they've come out and said in the media, I heard Kerr say, you know, this might be the end. Who knows what this team looks like in a couple of years. And, you know, we're kind of on a different trajectory than that. So I think that that kind of plays into, um, you know, some of the, 
the rivalry there. Do you, when you look back at that series, because this is a, a thought that I had as a player, <clears throat> when I looked back at opportunities and series that came down to a few plays, yeah. and even though they beat you guys in six games, four, two, I look back at that series from last year in the, in the Western conference semifinals. And I look at that series as much closer than it looked for sure. Be, because especially given the the game winner in game one yeah like, exactly like a, a, a honestly a wasted opportunity yeah no doubt i mean we're in our place um you know basically in control pretty much the whole game back and forth game um you know and clay thompson hits a big shot and uh you know Ja comes down miss a layup we go down oh one at the crib end up tying at 1-1. Uh, you know, if we win that first game, we're 2-0 going into their building. We sneak a game there, and now it's 3-1. You know, we're coming back to our place. So it's uh, – the margins are slim. I mean, you know, the margins are so slim in the playoffs, and I think that's what we've learned. You know, I think you need that experience to, to kind of get you over the hump with your preparation, you know, not only game plan with your body and everything leading up to the playoffs. I mean, we were banged up. I was hurt. Um, Ja was, he hurt his knee and obviously couldn't play. So DB was banged up. I mean, we were all banged up. So hopefully this year we can go into the playoffs a little bit healthier and, uh, you know, make some noise again. Specifically with that series, though, because I do, I agree with you that you, you gain so much from experience in playoffs, regardless yeah. of a series outcome, regardless mm -hmm. of the opponent but specifically with the Warriors who eventually became champions, what did you, what did you learn from them? What did you learn from, from, from playing them so tough in a, in a, in a, uh, in a series? They, they have that championship pedigree. I mean, you know, the, we had, I feel like we had them on the ropes, you know, a couple of times and it was just that calmness. Like, you know, we've been here before, uh, you know, obviously we try to emulate that, but we hadn't been there. Nobody on our roster had been in the second round of the playoffs besides Steve-O. And Steve-O was played out of the rotation. You know, he wasn't even really playing. Um, you know, so I think that that was something that, that we could take from that. And we could also take that we're close. I mean, obviously, you know, that's a team that goes on to win the championship. And um, rightfully so, they played well. They deserved the win. But um, like you said, we played them down to the wire. And, uh, you know, we got a lot to to be proud of, but also a lot to to build on and get better from. This year, it feels like both both of the conferences are are sort of wide open to a certain extent. There's a lot of kind of um, everyone's pretty close. Are there is there anyone in the West in particular um, that you've been impressed by? Maybe even like a little bit surprised by either like a team or a player. Team or a player in the West that I've been surprised by. I mean, I think I think honestly, just like how Jamal Murray's came back from injury. I mean, I think that he's looked good given the fact that he's missed so many games. And you know, Denver's always been good near the top of the standings. And I think that he's somebody that um, you know kind of takes them into a different different category. Uh, you know, Luke has been huge, but no James Harden like type numbers. Um, you know, but I think they losing Jalen Brunson hurt a lot. Um, you know, missing another playmaker out there. It's a lot for Luca to have to carry that load night in and night out. Um, Sacramento has been good um, offensively. You know, they got a bunch of guys making shots and um, playing well. So, I mean, the, the West, like you said, it's just weird. I mean, because going into the season, everybody's saying Clippers, Golden State again. Um, us, you know, I mean, New Orleans is obviously. Well, hey, hold on, hold on. Every, everybody except Tommy. Everybody except Tommy. Was nice. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy, you a hater, bro? What's up with you? He had I'm you guys a, in seventh in the I'm West. Not in seventh. 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 How crazy is that? How Yo, you crazy know what's crazy? Tommy. Hold on, Desmond. You know what's crazy? Know. Can, can you tell me why? Can you tell me why, please? Yes, Tommy. Yeah, please tell, I'll tell me why. Please. I'll tell you. I'll please. tell you exactly why. Because <laughs> okay, I, cool. I I knew you guys were really good, and I knew what was going to happen, yeah. which was all these teams were going to be everybody was going to be separated by like two or three games. And I wanted yeah. to pick a surprising team. So I picked New Orleans higher. I picked New Orleans uh, 
I think either fifth or sixth. And I basically, sh- I should have mm. picked you guys. Mm. I'm, I don't regret picking <laughs> Golden State one. I should have picked you guys two. I had Denver two, which actually holds up well. I think what's funny though, because JJ just did this to me literally a week ago with Fred, mm. is mm. every time he makes a dumb fucking call on the show, <laughs> I shut up and I don't say anything. And anytime we have someone on the show where I say something, he makes sure to bring it up. So you know what? Like I... <laughs> Tommy, Tommy, it's but fine. I will say, I, I will admit when I'm wrong. I will admit when I'm wrong. I will. I was completely wrong, and I will also say that his fandom has passed over to me because you guys are objectively the most fun team to watch in the league. Not just because of how you play, but the talking. Like that was the case last year, but it's also the case this year. But yeah, but so, so but p- part part of this though, part of this though, Tommy, part of the reason I was like. Very bullish on the Grizzlies. By the way, I love D'Anthony Melton, and I I did yeah. think that was going to hurt you guys losing him. But part of the reason I was I was bullish uh, was because of the playoffs last year. And not only that, like keep in mind, Ja was hurt, Desmond was hurt, and they still had a very competitive series against the Warriors. When did yeah. when did yeah. your back start hurting? Because I I yeah. actually brought up your splits from the playoffs last year, and I want okay. I want to point this out because it was. Minnesota series, you averaged 23 and a half. Your counting stats were good. Your floor game was good. 50% from the field, 49% from three. And then you sort of dropped off. Your shooting was still good. You sh- still shot 48% from three, but it was it was 14 a game. And yeah. in watching it, you clearly weren't moving correctly. It was crazy. Like, so game one of the Golden State game. But first off, it was crazy. Obviously, Golden State handled business in the Denver series, 3-1 or 4-1, whatever it was. Um, So we finished at like 10 o'clock on Saturday night or Friday night, and we played Golden State in an early game on Sunday. So we basically had 36 hours to recover after a series. Our first series that we won, I mean, we won it on the road in Minnesota, so I had to travel back. and I go into that first game and everybody was kind of just, you know, we're trying to muscle up the energy. Obviously, it's another series to kind of turn the page. And the first play of the second half, I come like just to do a normal mid-range jump shot. And it's like I planted, instead of playing on my toes, I kind of missed my footing and planted on my heels. And I just felt like my back just crunched. And I finished the game. Um you know, and then I wake up the next morning and I kid you not, I wish y'all, I could show y'all a picture, I'll take it to you after this. But my spine is like, it's like curved. Like I'm standing up and it's like half of my body is this way and the other half is like straight. I'm calling the trainers like, yo, like something's up with me. Like, I think I broke my back. And as soon as they saw the picture, they're like, you got to get an MRI right away. And I got the MRI. And basically I had a herniated disc in my back and it was like the way my body was trying to cope with it. It was getting away from the disc and I had like a lateral shift. So like, I thought I was out. I thought my season was over. Like I thought I was done. And obviously, you know, they give you all type of medicine and um, all that stuff. And I felt good enough to play. So I played in like game two, game three. I didn't really like, I was just out there almost like a decoy. Um, you know, and then game four, five, and six is when I kind of started feeling like myself again, pushing the ball in transition, being able to run. But there for like two or three, four or five days, whatever it was, my back was like locked up. I've had many back problems. Like the fact that you even <laughs> even played. Yeah. It was um, crazy. I battled like it was especially crazy. with the clip especially with the Clippers. Like my first two years with the Clippers, I had a bunch of back problems. And there were games where I was like, all right, I can compensate enough to play. Yeah, for sure. But I wasn't my my spine wasn't curved. Yeah, like I, everybody was pretty surprised I, I, that I played. I was surprised that I played. But you know, any other circumstances, I'm not playing. Like if it's a regular season game, I'm not playing. Like pretty much anything besides the playoffs, you know, I'm not playing. But I mean just to be out there, provide floor spacing, obviously, um, you know, they were keying in on me after the big series I had against Minnesota. So it opened the floor up for Ja to go to work and everybody else to do their thing. So, I mean, just getting up and down the floor and 
Clay Thompson really wasn't being too aggressive in those first two games either until they got back to Golden State. And then that's when, you know, chasing him around and stuff became a little tough. But, um, yeah, so that was kind of the story of that. Tommy, I want Desmond to answer this question because I, 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 your question is a great question because I was never, I was never great at the compensation part. Um, and Tommy and I have spoken about this offline, and I've probably mentioned this on the podcast before. But my last year dealing with an Achilles injury was all about compensation, and I did, I, yeah. you know, whatever. I shot thirty-seven percent from three, but it, I every single game it did not feel like myself. And I'm, yeah. I'm, ve- I'm very curious how you were able to still shoot forty-nine <laughs> percent from the feet from three <laughs> with a bad back. Yeah. Well, first off, my attempts went down in those couple games. I was barely like I'm only shooting if I'm wide open. You know, no movement, no none of that. Um, you know, and I mean, I, I don't know. I, I've always been the kid that's just shoot the ball. You know, I never really had a shooting coach. Everybody always used to tell me my form was a little wacky and it looks It is. But it is. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, every, everybody's always like, it goes in. So just keep shooting it. So I just, and that's regardless, you know, my toes sore, shoot the ball, my back sore, shoot the ball, whatever, just shoot the ball. I, I want to point out, because I looked up your your stats as well from the your first year going against Utah, mm-hmm. um, in the playoffs for your career. Granted, like you're not ten years in, so maybe there's a little yeah. bit of regression here. But for your <laughs> career, you've shot a hundred threes and you've made forty nine of them. You're forty nine percent in three series in the playoffs, yeah. which most people their their percentages dip, especially a shooter that actually has attention. Um, I, I actually want to segue now, be, be bringing that up into into sort of your growth this year. And I had texted you prior to your injury about that because I, I I think what I've seen is the off the dribble game, especially pull up threes. Those numbers are great, but the playmaking is really fascinating to me. That the the half court pick and roll playmaking. Did that development happen naturally? Is there a is there a guy on the player development side for Memphis that helped you with that? Is it film? Is it just an opportunity? How did you sort of make this jump this year in playmaking? I think it's it's honestly a, a combination of, of all of those things. I mean, at TCU, I just was never asked to to be a playmaker really until my senior year. You know, I mean, we had Jalen Fisher and Alex Robinson at the time, who were good guards, you know, especially for college, break down the defense. So I was just kind of catch and shoot guy. And once I got here to the Grizzlies, they were like, you know, we want you to do everything, you know, cutter, playmaker, shooter, defender, rebound, run the floor, you know, just just be all around. Guy. And, um, you know, my first year, I kind of played that same spot up role. And last year, you saw my role increase a little bit. And in the playoffs, it showed that, you know, we need another playmaker out there. I mean, Ja, obviously, in the Minnesota series, was getting blitzed every time he's in a pick and roll, which, you know, as a shooter, is nice for you because now the defense is asked to rotate all around the floor and I'm getting catch and shoot threes. But um, against Golden State, you know, they're just loading up, um, you know, on Ja and then really no shift off of me. So we need another guy that can break down the defense, allow Ja to get off the ball and get into some other action. So, I mean, when I tell you all I did was pick and roll and off the dribble threes the whole summer, like every day I knew exactly what I was doing when I went into the gym. Like I started ball handling, do some finishing, and then get in the live pick and roll play, like five or six bodies. Like guy guarding me, setting the screen, a guy in drop coverage, and another guy at the rim, you know, and I work on – different reads, whether it's passing, finishing at the rim, mid-range, off the dribble threes. And that was just, that was my summer. And, you know, I had the opportunity, coach had already set me down and told me, you know, kind of the plan for this year, wanted to kind of unleash me on the offensive end. So, um, you know, it all just kind of, kind of came together. <laughs> what do you want to eat tonight? Maybe you want a home-cooked favorite. I don't feel like going to the store. Or you want something exciting and new, but it would be great to stay in tonight. DoorDash connects you with everything you want, whenever and however you want it. Along with the restaurants you love, you can now get groceries and other essential items delivered with DoorDash. Get drinks, snacks, and other household items in under an hour. 
Every time you place an order for pickup or delivery, you're setting off a chain reaction that helps give back to the people who make your neighborhood unique. With over 300,000 partners, you can support your neighborhood go-tos or choose from your favorite national restaurants like Popeye's, Chipotle, and Cheesecake Factory. With DoorDash, you're not just getting the things you love, but supporting the community you love too. From the stores and restaurants to the dashers driving around, each purchase provides a new opportunity for everyone involved because with DoorDash, there is a neighborhood of good in every order. For a limited time, our listeners can get 50% off to a $20 value and $0 delivery fees when you download the DoorDash app and enter code JJ23. That's 50% off up to a $20 value and zero delivery fees when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code JJ23. Don't forget, that's code JJ23 for 50% off up to a $20 value and zero delivery fees with DoorDash. Subject to change, terms apply. There's no pressure here, Desmond. There's no pressure, but my whole thesis last year during the playoffs, because I get asked to do this now, was you guys needed a secondary creator in the half court, mm-hmm. and that and and that's part of that's part of the reason that I am particularly bullish on you. Um, are you in terms of the one dribble pull ups? Because pre injury, the numbers were insane. Um, are you a one two guy or a hop guy? Like how do you use uh, that? Because I, because I, I, I mix it up some, yeah. but I, I be honest with you. And Jamal Crawford and I used to talk about this all the time. I was so much more of a hop guy, where you kind of extended the dribble out and went and for got sure. it, so you got yeah. it almost like a pass. Does that for sure? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I've, I've watched. It's crazy in college. I watched a lot of your film because um, I was like a guy that Coach Miller, Ryan or Mike Miller's brother, he was my coach at TCU. Thought that I could, you know, we were on floppy action and all type of stuff like that. So we watch a lot of your stuff. But um, I honestly like the one two. I, I just been like a one two guy. I mean, I will hop on two feet every once in a while, but um, I'm more like a one two. Yeah, your your one two going left, especially, yeah. is way better than I. <laughs> <laughs> I was never. I was all for some reason when I did the one two going left, I was it was always leaning or off balance. Like yeah. because again, it's it's the short arm brotherhood, you know what I mean? <laughs> like I was always so worried about that, that yeah. the rear the view guy, contest. And I feel you. I feel you. I mean, that's something that I struggle with still to this day. Like especially on my if for some reason I feel it more on my mid-range jumpers than my threes. Like on my mid-range jumpers, I like to jump and hang in the air a little bit. So I feel like that guy's getting over the screen. He's going to be able to get a fingertip on it or get a good contest. So I just keep falling. Like, I'll just keep falling. But a three, I don't know. I just feel like I get it off. And, I mean, so when you got a guy like Steven Adams screening for you, it don't take much to, to get a look. Desmond, did Jakob Pertl do anything personal to Ja? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> you would think so. I mean, the way... John Moran attacks him, but that's San Antonio for years. You know, drop the big all the way under the basket and make try to make you take mid range jump shots. John is going to eat up that space, and once he gets to two feet, it's over with. Um, Desmond, we want to be very sensitive to your time because I know you guys have a, a Tillman's birthdays tonight, and and uh, <clears throat> we want to make sure you get to his birthday party on time. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do have to ask you though. In a fight between you and Jordan Clarkson, who's winning? <laughs> I don't even think it's a question. Like, I don't even think that that is like a question. Like, I don't, I think, I think well, Jordan Clarkson's not really a fighter type. You know, he, he's thrown up his fist. He's a squared times. up a lot, though. He yeah, that's, up a lot. that's what I'm saying. I think he's like 0 and 4 so far. Four squares, <laughs> no punch. I was going to ask you, why do you think that people keep trying to fight you? You're big as shit. Like, you're, you're like yeah, not the guy know. that I'd want to fight. I don't know. I'm not even trying to pick fights out here either. I'm just playing <laughs> basketball. He's the, he's the quiet linebacker. <laughs> so, so, so Jordan hits you across the head, and you obviously turn to him. For the fan in that moment, real, real talk, not, not like I'm going to fight. The, like, For what, sure. is go, what is going through your head? Do you want clarification I, of why he, he hit you in the head? Like, yeah, what is going like I, I, I just had to turn. Like, I turned immediately to just kind of see, like, check his energy just to see, like, did you mean to foul me? Like, 
did you mean to hit me over the head? Like, and then once he squared up, like I was like, okay, he he meant that. You know what I'm saying? And I'm walking towards him, but there's already 20 people in between both of us. So it's just like, what, like, what do we, I didn't really understand um, what squaring up was going to do. But yeah, I, uh, I, I was just, yeah, I was confused. I was confused. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. It's amazing. Uh, we, by the way, we love Jordan Clarkson. He's, we're we're yeah, great fans player, of Jordan. Like, I, 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 yeah, he's a baller. Sure. He's a hooper. He's for a bucket. Sure. All he that stuff. It just, he can hoop. Yeah. It is funny because there was uh, there was a nice montage that someone put on Twitter of all the times since going back to the Lakers days <laughs> that he squared yeah. up on people. And it was an entertaining yeah. video. That's all I'm saying. It was entertaining. Yeah. It was entertaining. <laughs> I wouldn't, I, personally, I wouldn't pick a fight with you. I wouldn't pick a fight with yeah. you. Uh, Desmond, we appreciate the time, brother. Go to go Thank to your you, teammate's birthday. We we appreciate it. And uh, pulling for you, bro. Thanks, appreciate y'all having me, man.